In this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the most commonly used packages on the npm repository that can be used as building blocks for your own Node.js projects. So we're going to take a look at a few different packages and they're all really simple in that they only really achieve one thing. But that's great for us because if we want to achieve a certain thing in our project, we can just reach out to the npm repository and download a certain package to solve a certain task. So let's just set up a new project so that we can install these packages as dependencies. So the first package we'll use is called chalk, which is used to add some style to the output that you produce on the console. So you can see chalk has been added as a dependency to our project. So let's go over to our main app.js file and we'll load the chalk module in by requiring it. And if we were to do just a simple console log, The output is very plain and we can't distinguish it from any of the other text on the command line. So if we utilise chalk to stylize it a little bit, you can see for example we can make our error messages stand out a bit. And the way chalk works, we can actually chain on additional functions or properties if you will to add further styling. Like setting the background to red for example. And if you head over to the Chalk GitHub repository, you'll see all of the different styles that are available to you listed there. So another really common task to do within a Node.js project is to actually send a HTTP request. That is, you might need to send some data somewhere or you might need to get some data from a, a different API for example. And although the Node Core modules do have good support for networking, there are several packages available which make things a lot simpler. And probably the most commonly used of these is called Axios. So say for example we wanted to send a get request to get some data from a URL. We just call the get function which actually returns a promise. So we can do something with the results that come back from that URL and obviously catch any errors that occurred. And it might be useful to put our console.log with chalk inside of the catch block. So let's try this out with an actual example rather than just using a dummy URL. So I'm just going to send a get request to the Star Wars API, which if you haven't come across before, it's just a lot of data about the Star Wars films. And you can actually specify in the URL whether you want to find out information about people, vehicles, etc. And you get some data coming back in JSON format, a bit like this. So let's test out our Axios get request. And this is actually people, not person. And if we just open up the terminal to see some of the data that's returned, You can see all of our API data being returned, but there's also a lot of other information about the request itself, which may or may not be useful depending on what you're trying to achieve. So we can just simplify that in our console.log to just log out results.data. So one final commonly used NPM package that we'll look at is called Commander. And what Commander does is enables us to handle command line arguments in an easy and graceful way. For example, if we wanted to pass in command line arguments to our app.js file to customize the Axios request that we're sending, we can add command line options via Commander. So here we're creating two options for our app.js file, which can be expressed as dash t for type or dash n for number. And these names will actually get added as properties onto the commander object. So we can use them in our Axios request like this. Oops, and commander needs to get process.argv, not process.args, which doesn't actually exist on the process object. So now if we run our app file again, we can specify a different type of data to request from the Star Wars API and the number of results to return. So whilst obviously you could pass in your own command line arguments, as we have done in previous lessons, you'd need to make sure that you got the order right for when you extract them from process.argv. And as with a lot of these basic NPM packages, 
They're just focused on doing one simple task, but it's a task that'll make your life a lot easier. Speaking of making your life easier, in the next lesson we'll look at how to create your own modules within your Node.js projects so that you can reuse your code across multiple parts of your project.